So the beauty about this farm is it's about 15 acres in size and look at the water. It is, it is just about maybe one inch or even less than one inch of water you get from the bowel and that is stored in this tank and this has a capacity of about uh, lakh and a half liters and it is with this water that he is able to manage 15 acres of farm. It is really wonderful to see how uh, you are using just about an inch of water and managing this farm so nicely and your uh, deep knowledge uh, in the basic agriculture and your search for more knowledge is all commendable. Hi, uh, this is Benjamin, founder of Farm Again. So in the recent past, we have been posting a lot of videos from different farms, different crops, different regions, different weather conditions. And today, we are in a special farm. It is uh, near Karur in Tamil Nadu. And uh, they, they, they are growing uh, oil palm. Usually, oil palm is grown in countries like Malaysia. And uh, even in India, some parts of Telangana, you can see oil palm. But uh, I'm seeing this for the first time in uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, the farmer uh, is Mr. M. Durairaj. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. So it is very interesting to see Mr. Durairaj uh, he has uh, 15 acres of farm of which around 10 acres is growing uh, a combination of oil palm, uh, guava and uh, coconut. So today let us get into his uh, method of cultivation and how he got into uh, Grotron and what benefits he expects. So we will discuss these things in this video. One of the challenges farmers in this region face are a threat to agriculture itself, you can say. Uh, that the average rainfall in this area is supposed to be 500 mm or lesser on a entire year. Therefore, in places like this, you have to be really diligent in how you use water and only if you are extremely diligent, uh, we can succeed in our agriculture journey. Uh, so what is this plant? It looks like some crop here. Yes sir, this is horse crumb sir. It is for uh, leguminous friend. It is a uh, leguminous friend. It is very uh, helpful for the uh, pressure patient. It is, uh, okay. the crane is very helpful for the pressure patient patients. It contains more nitrogen in the root nodules. If it will not come uh, harvest, you can uh, plough it, uh, plough it and uh, it will be the fertilizer for the oil palm. So I am planting horse grams. Sir. Okay. Uh, this also adds humus, a uh, tremendous amount of humus uh, to the soil. In fact, uh, the amount of humus that is required to build organic carbon is enormous. It is really not possible by just adding cow dung or any other mean or means of uh, compost into the soil. This is one of the best ways of adding um, humus to the soil which in turn will increase its orga organic carbon. And uh, in addition to that, uh, during its growth phase it also acts, I mean now it is very young, but once it grows a little bit, now it covers the entire land and acts like a natural mulch because of which unwanted uh, Weeds can also be controlled. So, the beauty about this farm is it's about 15 acres in size and look at the water. It is, it is just about maybe one inch or even less than one inch of water you get from the bowel and that is stored in this tank and this has a capacity of about uh, lakh and a half liters and it is with this water that he is able to manage 15 acres of farm and uh, uh, your cattle. I think you have about uh, 100 sheep and some cows and even this is a, a source of water for your home use also. Yes, so it, it's, it's really wonderful. And uh, I would like to really pass this message to the farmers who have surplus water and yet they think their water is not sufficient. Not sufficient. And uh, uh, the, the kind of growth you are able to show on your crops with this limited water is far better than you know several farmers who have surplus yeah. amount of water. So this is really something that needs to be recognized and a lesson for many farmers to learn from. Thank you so much. And uh, I mean, uh, this, is, this is a lesson to me too. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So in this farm, Mr. Durairaj has installed six fertigation tanks. So when I asked him the reason for, for uh, choosing six tanks, according to him, there are 16 elements that, that a plant requires, of which three they get naturally, and the remaining 13 have to be fed through a fertigation system. And uh, he thinks, different fertilizers with the different combination of those 13 elements are available in the market and he will fill them in these tanks and depending on the crop where it is irrigating if it is to uh, oil palm the ratio recommended by the government or the uh, agriculture department is something he will program in the app and similarly he will do for, for the other crops for guava or uh, coconut 
and when uh, when uh, the system irrigates to a respective crop uh, the right ratio for that crop will be taken from each of these tanks in be supplied and uh, according to mr duraraj what is uh, his understanding is that uh, when you feed these crops on a daily basis give them the right nutrient uh, every day they grow much better than giving it uh, on a on a long uh, frequency so it is also interesting interesting to see that uh, there are six fertigation tanks and uh, more interestingly it is grotron tank and like i have said uh, in the previous videos i don't generally uh, you know uh, sell this tanks unless the customers ask for because it is expensive because of uh, the way we make them one is it is transparent food grade plastic virgin plastic and uh, it weighs double that of uh, what you get from the market uh, uh, for the same uh, quantity so uh, but then he has chosen to go with this tank and certainly it will it will give its benefits because it was designed in a way you can accumulate the sediments at the bottom and then collect them out and the fertigation actually comes through the side so this is farm marshal and we have spoken about this in the last video also this is a version 3 farm marshal where we incorporated a, a touch display and uh, if you come this side you can see our uh, fertigation system and this fertigation system like i have said before um, primarily our objective was to make it functional usable and really didn't give much importance to the appearance therefore you will see it much plain compared to uh, other systems uh, so we have uh, six tanks therefore uh, six valves and uh, an injection setup all very simple but functional there are some questions that i uh, would like to address and because of rain uh, we just moved into the fertigation unit so i will answer the questions right from here otherwise i would have actually loved to stand in the field and explain showing uh the stuff there but unfortunately because of the rains uh i think we will uh, do the question and ans answer from the fertigation uh, room so um palm tree can pretty much grow uh, anywhere uh if you look at uh, the major countries they are uh, malaysia and uh, indonesia and i have personally heard from many people in malaysia that they uh, grow in uh, 1800 mm plus area some say uh, 2000 mm plus some say 2300 mm plus so each one has their own definition of where the palm trees can grow well on the contrary if you look at uh, uh, our country uh, in india i think in the last 10 years um, uh, one uh, to maybe reduce imports second in malaysia uh, there is a lot of uh, shifting of crop that is taking place now people are shifting from oil palm to uh, durian so there is also likely a reduction in supply therefore for for certain reasons uh, india is now focusing on uh, increasing the uh, oil uh, production uh, palm oil production and therefore uh, especially andhra telangana you can see a lot of farms uh, growing oil palm for the last 10 years and they have been doing really well and uh, the one of the reasons probable reasons is that uh, we have a uh, lot of sun here and i have spoken in my previous videos about photosynthesis so if we are in some way or the other uh, help the plant to enhance photosynthesis the plant is going to perform better and because we have a lot of sunlight to harvest almost throughout the year as long as we create the right mi microclimatic condition as long as we feed the plant with the right minerals that it needs it has to produce and it is producing uh, uh, you can see that in andhra telangana as well as farms uh, in tamil nadu as well um oil palm generally they come to harvest uh, the initial harvest starts in the year 2 3 uh, but then the best productivity starts only by the year 6 uh, 7 and 8 and after 8 it is into its full uh, uh, capacity full productivity oil palm trees generally grow in in, in soil that has ph range of neutral to slightly acidic so neutral is 7 acidic up to around 4 and 1/2 um so in this range it grows quite well and if the soil is acid i mean alkaline let's say 8 9 10 uh, you have to think twice before going in for uh, oil palm uh, as far as soil condition is concerned any well drained soil is fine uh, which means uh, when you irrigate the water has to drain out 
uh, it should not stagnate uh, there like a clay uh, soil. So, therefore, uh, anything other than clay soil should be perfectly fine for uh, oil palm. The usual means of propagation is still uh, growing from the seeds. Uh, that is the most common method uh, till date. However, uh, the tissue culture method is gaining a bit of a popularity uh, in, the, in the recent past. The reason being, uh, the seeds when you propagate through the seeds, uh, there is no guarantee that the genetic characteristics of the plants will be retained as is. There will be some variations. However, if you do it through tissue culture, uh, the genetic characters of the mother plant will be 100% retained. Therefore, there is a preference towards tissue culture off late and it is gaining popularity. So as far as pest goes, uh, oil palm trees are generally attacked by different types of weevils and beetles and caterpillars. Usually oil palms have a standard of 9 meters as plant to plant spacing and uh, depending on how big uh, the canopy is likely to grow. In practice, generally the density is maintained anywhere between 50 and 65 per acre. Uh, so the harvesting is done with a sickle which is uh, typically half moon shaped and it is tied to a, a long stick and then they uh, cut it uh, standing on the ground. Uh, they use the same sickle to cut the uh, palm tree, I mean palm fruits as well as uh, to get it off the you know uh, dried leaves as well. Lifespan of a palm tree, uh, there is really no definite lifespan. Uh, any uh, palm tree family um, can grow indefinitely, I mean they keep growing. But then uh, it is decided based on how long uh, you can reach uh, with the sickle. Uh, typically the lifespan uh, or the duration people maintain the palm trees used to be around 25 to 30. Um, and if they can really reach out to the tree, um, they can grow even a uh, little longer, but generally it is around 25 to 30 uh, years. So my personal opinion, um, as far as oil palm goes in India, it is going to be profitable crop for some time, uh, at least in the near foreseeable future, uh, simply because the government of India is encouraging oil palm production in India. Again, that is because there is a lot of money that goes out of India, a lot of foreign exchange gets out of the country because of uh, this oil palm. Therefore, to contain that, uh, it is likely that a lot of production will start happening in India. And also, if you really look at the food industry, uh, the primary oil they use for frying is uh, uh, palm oil. Therefore, the demand is likely to continue for um, you know, time to come and uh, therefore, it will remain uh, a real profitable crop is what I think. Uh, so, we have also done a, a basic workout on uh, so, you know, an ROI. Uh, so, how much will you have to invest and uh, uh, from when will you start getting production and how long can you get uh, production and when you will break even. So, we have done some, some basic mathematics and we will put them in the description. Uh, please do go through the description after you have uh, watched the video. Sir, uh, thank you so much for your time. It is really wonderful to see how uh, you are uh, using just about an inch of water and managing this farm so nicely and your uh, deep knowledge. Uh, in the basic agriculture and your search for more knowledge is all commendable okay. and I really wish more farmers follow your footsteps and uh, become successful and uh, entrepreneurial farmers. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will.